Welcome, we're talking Webflow today. Uh, Webflow is a site builder. You probably know a lot of them on the market. Um, the difference that Webflow has is that it actually writes code as you build your site. We're using the character that we did last week that a lot of you appreciated, so that makes me super happy. The little GMO character, as I call it now, because, I mean, come on, it is a crossing between four animals, possibly more. Hopefully you like it and you're gonna learn something and it's gonna be fun because knowledge is fun, isn't it? Please say yes. <laughs> Let's start with a blank site. Uh, you can use the template if you want. And by the way, uh, this is free. You can actually do the same thing that I'm doing for free right now. Um, so you name it. And that is our homepage canvas. But I want my own font, so I'm going to add my font because designers be like, I am going to project settings, fonts, obviously, and uploading my beloved Gilroy and uploading font button and back to our canvas because we're ready. So that's the home page. We want the 404 page, not the home page. So we're going to the 404 page. <laughs> Very complicated stuff so far. There you go. We have elements by default, but we're lazy. So why make new ones when you can edit those? Uh, we're going to edit the title. And now is a good time to actually analyze what we have. So these, everything on a the canvas, they're all HTML objects. There's an image, a title, and a text block. But that's not it. They're contained in a block that's called utility page content. It's self-contained by utility page wrap. And by the way, these names are arbitrary. They're not like following the supreme law of the internet. You can name them however you want. So what am I doing here? You may wonder. I'm trying to see which of those containers. So I might call them divs or div blocks in the video, just so you know, out of habit, because it's the, the name of the common objects that contain other things. That is why. So I'm trying to see which level, so which container has its dimension defined. Because as you can see here, the area we have to work with is pretty small and I want to make it bigger. <laughs> oh, there you go. So this is the, the grand authority of width, the utility page content. So here, I would want that to be a percentage. I would want it to be 80% and enter. So let's replace that image with our better image. There we go. Why on earth is it so big? Because it doesn't have any defined dimensions. So therefore it is put at its original size. So also if your image is too big in a sense of, you know, too heavy, too long to load, um, there will be a little warning sign. So compress your images. Our little 404 informer, you're very cute. You, we know you have candy but you're being a tad obnoxious, so we'll shrink you down. Done. Now I'm updating my copy because it sounds better that way. And we will style our H2. So we're using the font that we uploaded because it's my favorite. And uh, you actually have a bunch of options. You don't have to like upload any of them and you can even use Google fonts. So doing the same thing to the text block. And boom, done. What's next? The 404 is next. So if you don't know CSS, now is the time where you drop the food, drop the knitting, drop the slime if you're 12 and stuck in 2017, and listen carefully because it's important and we're talking about overlapping. So I'm making the 404 and... What's this? Oh, fucking hell. Yes, I don't know what I did here. I'm cringing too. Drop it. <laughs> The 404 object is going to be behind the GMO squirrel bear thing. But they're still going to be aligned on the page together as one. So you guessed it. They have to be in a container, in the same container, just like our objects, so that they stay together. So to do that, I'm bringing in a div block. See, told you it would come at some point, the div block. And I'm placing the two in not div. So now we're going to talk a little bit about flex boxes. So this is, I repeat, a put the slime down moment. So flex boxes are a display setting that enables all the children of the div block they're in to follow a set of rules. Flex boxes are amazing. So I'm going to try to do my best to explain them. So little demo. We want the object to be centered horizontally. So 
it's this button and vertically so um, wrapping means you either want your objects to go to a new line or to be combined in one space like to be next to each other so i actually clicked wrap here but it has no impact on the result because I'm not perfect, okay? So yeah, ignore that, that doesn't count, but at least you know what it is. We're setting the width of the fourfold lock to 100%, and now is another pay attention moment. We're switching the position to absolute. That means that it's not tied to the other object anymore. So now it can in fact overlap it. So we're bringing the size up to obnoxiousness because that's how we roll. So we want the image to be on top. So we're gonna use a Z index. Z index is basically a classification of layers. So we're gonna attribute a certain number to, well, actually both layers. And the higher number goes on top. So that's what we're doing. So we can't assign a Z index to any type of position. So I'm gonna set uh, my image to relative. So the absolute is, is not a problem, it's absolute. We can set a Z index and we could put one because we want it at the bottom. But the image though is static. So we're gonna assign it a relative position. It won't impact its settings at all, um, but that way we can set a Z index to bring it forward. So we're gonna set the sizing of the 404 to fit the smaller screen size of this range. Are you confused by what I just said? Fear not, I shall explain. A breakpoint is basically a range within which um, the site is gonna have a certain type of value or a certain value is assigned to it. So let's say, I actually don't know the exact brain points by heart, but let's say desktop is, I'm gonna say something wrong and I'm aware of it, a thousand plus. So if your browser is a thousand pixels or wider, it's gonna show you the desktop version. If you're 700 to 1000, that's going to be another range after that 700 breakpoint that is being hit. That makes sense? No, it doesn't? Okay. You understand at the end because we're going to do it. Again, I'm not good at tutorials. I don't know why you're requesting this. But moving on, after 10 minutes of explaining what a breakpoint is, why am I explaining this now considering that I'm doing it later? Because right now I'm actually setting it up for the smallest number of that range. That way, it can't look bad because if it's the smallest of that range, it looks okay. If you go wider, it looks okay. And if you go smaller, it's gonna be relayed to another breakpoint. So we're good. Why am I terrible at this? Because you don't have enough practice, Meg, that's why. Blink once if you want me to pull the plug. Okay, beat up session over. So we're now adding some colors. So fairly straightforward. I'm not gonna go too deep into classes today because that's already a lot that we're covering. Um, but see the little name on top? That's a class. It contains all the properties that we're picking in this side panel. Um, and if you were to add that class to another object, it would actually apply all the properties that are linked to the class. Technically, we're not painting the background here. We're painting a class that is attributed to an object, in this case, the div named utility page wrap. Same thing with the 404. We're painting heading two. I should stop saying painting. It's not an industry standard. I'm just trying to sound crafty. Why am I trying to sound crafty? It's lame. Are you stupid? Who wants to see our little guy floaty? Like floating in the air, like going up and down. Interactions, that's right. So we're gonna animate it. We're selecting the image. We're gonna go to the interaction tab. So I want him to float constantly. So what can be a trigger for that? Page load. When it finishes loading, new animation. So name it and we want it to move. So three move stopping points, bottom up and bottom again. So the first one is the initial position, obviously. We're setting a duration and easing for the two last ones. And it shall be looped. There you go reviewing it awesome blossom extra awesome we're back adding an animation to the 404 okay done i'm not going over it because we just we, it's the same thing so we want the 404 to fit on every screen size so while you see me do that understand this important moment the smaller breakpoints always inherit the characteristics of the bigger screen that 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 is very important so the desktop would relay its information to the tablet it's gonna be bigger screen, 
smaller screen, smaller screen, smallest screen. So it's cascading down from the largest to the smallest screen. This means do not start with the mobile version ever. Send this message to 100 friends or your happiness will go away. I will now take questions. Because that, that's, that's it. That's the end of the video. <laughs> In conclusion, the slime trend should die. There was way too many TV references in this video. And visual HTML and CSS is fun. Wasn't it? Wasn't it? All right. So I will see you next time. I don't know what it's going to be yet because I don't plan enough, apparently. Oh, and my end screens. I'm not forgetting this time. You can watch my other videos by clicking on my end screens. Click it. No? Okay. Oh my god, I look like a dad.